Hello, this is Vishwit from Edward. Hi, this is Prasad from Edward. Prasad, in this tutorial video, we'll be discussing regarding RC car racing techniques and tips. And since you have participated in many competitions organized by reputed institutions, so can you share your experience that you have gained? Yeah, I have participated in various colleges. So there are various issues while, while racing the RC car. Hmm. So I'm here to tackle and give some tips and techniques to win the competitions. Okay, so in this video, we'll be discussing in stepwise manner about various parts of RC car exactly. and their problems that beginners will be facing. Exactly. So starting with wheel assembly, the wheel assembly over here, the suspension system, the most important the engine meshing as well as the tuning, then the fuel intake and the most important the fabrication required in participation in different colleges. Like some of the arms that have been put over here. As well as the chassis. Okay, the ground over here. Yeah. Okay, great. And at last we'll be discussing regarding the electronic systems also. Okay, Prasad. So let us discuss on the first topic that is the wheel assembly and the techniques and tips that the beginner should keep in mind while going for a race. Exactly. So for the main, we will go with the three main concepts that okay. is the caster, towing and the camber which plays an important role in the stability of the car as well as the steering. So what is camber actually? Camber, in simple definition we can say that Angle between the tire's center line and the vertical plane when viewed from the front is known as camber. So when I'm viewing the car from the front side, the angle between the tire's center line and the vertical plane, that is a y axis. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so what are the benefits in, of camber and camber? Yeah, in camber, when it is when you put positive camber, that is mainly used in heavy vehicles where lot of traction is required between the wheel and the ground. But in racing cars, negative camber is used. Why? to have lot of acceleration. So in this we have a 5 wheel in negative camber. So this is the front wheel assembly and this is the rear wheel assembly. So in rear wheel assembly you are saying that we have to keep the camber zero or positive. Zero or positive. Because to have lot of traction between the tires and the ground. So in the rear wheel assembly we will be having more traction. Yeah. And in the front wheel assembly we, we have, have good acceleration. So we will keep it as negative camber. Okay. I got it. No. Now I'm talking about caster. What is caster? Caster. Caster you can say that the axis of the kingpin with the ground. With the ground when viewed from the side. Side. Exactly. Okay. So the kingpin axis means uh, we are talking about the wheel hub. Exactly. Correct. The wheel yeah. hub is fixed with the A arms. Yeah. And the pin, the pin connect which connects the axis between with the kingpin is lying mm -hmm. with the ground as is it is caster. It is already fixed and it's better you go with the original setup. Otherwise, always positive camber is used in the all the racing cars. So we should not touch the caster. So yeah, otherwise it, it is positive camber. Okay. Now talking about toe in and toe out. What is toe in and toe out? Toe in toe out is the concept where we view from the top. What is the important of that is the wear of the tire is reduced if you have a proper toe as well as the camber and in the racing cars like RC racing cars the toe out is kept up to a certain angle in front and toe in or zero toe is kept in the rear section uh, and does this help in the steering? yeah it definitely helps in steering when you keep the toe out there will be less steering response. There will be less steering if effort on the servos, so that you will get quick re response in the steering. Okay, so you are talking about that we should keep toe in. No, toe out. Toe out in the front side. Front wheel, front section. And a front wheel assembly. Exactly. And at the rear wheel assembly, it should be zero. It Otherwise, be zero. toe in. Toe in a little bit, so okay. that the car moves at a straight pitch. Okay, so if I am wrong, just correct me out. Okay. Okay. So the first three tips for camber in front wheel assembly we will be keeping negative camber yeah up to 5 degree up to 5 degree because we want more acceleration yeah and less traction and less traction. rare it will be zero or positive okay the but first... again it depends upon the track as well as the driver setup okay so the first tip is over the second tip for caster already will be keeping what the oem part is coming exactly. like. yeah and the third thing is toe in and toe, toe out, out. So toe out in the front section and and toe in in the rear section. For more, uh, so steering? have less wear in the tires and okay. have good steering response in and good cornerability too. Okay, so now we'll by using this okay. all techniques, you can reduce the tire wear and you can have a long life of the tires, as well as the servos and the car will have good steering. 
now going for the suspension system now just explain me uh, what all suspension settings should I keep at the front wheel assembly as well as at the rear wheel assembly yeah in front it is oil filled dampers okay. so in front and the back uh, there is oil filled in the suspension hmm. so according to the setup means according to the track we can change the oil mostly there are different density oil are there so in the front we use the suspension is used 300 CST that is and hard suspension is used at the rear in front we require braking effect so the, the length is kept less while in this the spring length has been increased so that we get good steering we get good suspensions okay so I'm repeating what you are saying okay if I'm wrong just correct me out uh, so in the front section the beginners will keep the suspension length shorter yeah and in the rear wheel assembly the suspension length will be longer yeah so, so that the beginners can have more braking effect in the front section when you brake Okay. And the car will not skid when you have a good when you have a direct brake during the corners. And uh, should we uh, means touch the braking wheels and everything? We should change. Uh, see, for the beginners, it's not necessary. But when you become a pro, then you have to go for that. So, what type of fluids should we use? Uh, there are various different fluids which come in market for the oils uh, for the this cars. You can get it uh, from the hobby store. And uh, it should be soft. You said something regarding softness of the suspension and the hardness of the suspension. Yeah. Uh, as I said, it depends on the track. But mostly soft oil is used so that you get good suspension effect. Okay. We'll have the meshing of this car. The spur gear and the clutch bell has to be pro properly meshed in this car so we'll have some techniques to do that we just get a cut piece of paper and pass between them just I'll show you the demo now see now you can look that always remember that the piece of paper should not get torn and the impressions of the teeth should be at equal distance between them so here we can show that the mesh is proper and always remember this has to be done before going to the race or driving the car also yeah Prasad I have always seen the engine meshing video it was really good I could understand how you have to do the meshing and checking and all sort of things now can I explain me regarding the IC engine tuning and all because the car has to run for 15 minutes correct yeah. continuously in this yeah. race so what all precautionary measures I should take as you told that 15 minutes you have to run the car yeah. in the race so you have to tune it properly okay means the air and fuel ratio ratio it has to be set properly so that it doesn't get engine doesn't have to quit any time in the race Okay, okay. The so air the and the fuel ratio should be done proper. So if the ratio is not proper, then uh, it might stop. It, it, you can go with the high RPM or low RPM or even it may quit. Okay. So you have to go with the proper air to fuel ratio. Okay. So as a beginner, how will I understand what is the proper air to fuel ratio? Uh, yeah, I will. I will just give you some view, and we have already done some videos on tuning. Okay, yeah. So, already so we have a video on tuning in our tutorial section. Exactly. Yeah, people can go and visit our YouTube channel and see the tuning video for the RC Nitro car but uh, still we will be giving some tips for the air so, something for the uh, running the car okay. always clean the filter okay. before the race okay. uh, just remove the filter wash it properly with water and just have some 2-3 to three drops of oil of air filter so that the, it has to be clean and proper air should be sucked through the filter this is the most important thing what we have to do then we have to we can if you do with that then we can go with the settings of okay. the uh, setting the same I can see over there uh, I can see two uh, one is of golden color what is it means this is high speed this is the high speed yeah high speed and this is this is the low speed so how I have to means do the tuning and all because with this high speed and low speed I have to do the tuning yeah can I explain it out uh, it's simple when you move this anti-clockwise okay and you can move this clockwise okay, right okay so when you move it clockwise direction okay the needle is getting inside so okay. it is the engine is getting leaner leaner so what is happening in leaner the air is being less 
air is going in more amount and okay. the fuel is been less okay. so the temperature of engine may increase okay. when you go in the clockwise direction so so when this i is the high speed high speed means what the speed of my car will increase no it what this high speed it means the throttle will open from 50 to full throttle okay. 50% to full throttle that opening will give you the high speed settings okay high speed settings and for this low speed low speed for 0 to 50% okay so that is controlled by this needle okay and this is controlled from 50 but still you have to do the proper of both okay for smooth functioning from 0 to 100% okay so uh, for this low speed needle we are moving this clockwise and clockwise yeah when you okay. move the same it is when you move in clockwise direction it will get leaner okay. and when you move in um, opposite anti clockwise direction okay. it will get leaner and clockwise direction so but again one thing remember that high rich setting is proper but never go in lean conditions okay lean conditions i didn't understand lean condition is that less fuel is less fuel is there so what will happen the temperature inside the combustion chamber will increase okay. which will have which will can uh, can cause to your, If uh, the piston can even break in that situation. Okay, okay, okay. So never go in very lean situation. Sometimes high means uh, you can go with rich settings. That okay. is sometimes fine. So uh, rich settings means uh, more fuel will be consumed. Exactly, and more fuel will be consumed, but it is the temperature will be controlled and you the cooling will be done properly for the okay. engine. Okay. Okay, Prasad. Now let us discuss regarding the fuel system and all the pipings that I can see over here. Because I've seen many participants in competition facing uh, problem with this fuel system. They have some leakage problem. Sometimes their car crashes and they just get worn out with these screws and all. So can you give us some view on how to maintain this system? Yeah, exactly. As you can see from the fuel tank, there is a line passing to the uh, car. Uh, carburetor okay so always you have to take care there is there should be no air bubble in this okay if why the air bubble comes if there is any leak in the tank hmm. due to any uh, damage then the there will be always a air bubble forming okay. so always remove this air bubble that's the main precaution you can be it can be taken no, how can i how can i remove the air bubble over here Ah, uh, there are two ways. Once one one way is to just check out whether there is a leak okay. in the fuel tank, as normal as we what we do in the punches of okay. the uh, normal tires. Okay. That way you can do it. Okay. The second one way is that just change the fuel tank. Okay. But okay. it's again you have to work costly one. Yeah, right. but okay. again you have to work. You have to take some trouble with that. But this is the main as. A sing if a sing single air bubble is formed, mm -hmm. fuel will not enter the carburetor and engine will stop working. Okay. So it has to be done very carefully as well as while do do removing the air bubble, you have to take care that water should not enter this fuel tank. Okay, okay, okay. So that is also important. But but you should not play with the fuel tank anyways. Always you have to keep it as clean as this. The surface has to be kept clean so that fuel should always enter and. for smooth functioning of the engine and i can see this pipe coming up over there what is the use of this yeah this creates the pressure okay. so that the fuel is always passed through the carburetor to the carburetor okay and so what is this part called as this is the exhaust this is the exhaust and this pipe is connected to the fuel tank uh, which creates pressure yeah and this pressure pushes this fuel to this carburetor, carburetor. Yeah. okay and then the air fuel mixture goes into the piston and yeah. then it flows okay Yeah, Prasad. Let us now discuss on the fabrication techniques. I have seen in many pollen statements of various institutions where they have mentioned that the participants have to come with their own fabricated car. So, can you kindly guide how to fabricate our own RC car? Yeah. See, we have to fabricate. It is compulsion in all the colleges to fabricate the components of the car. Okay. What all can be fabricated? I'll just have a look on that. Okay. The lower arms. That is this one. You are talking about this. Yeah. Okay. You can see that which you call it as wish wish bones. Ha. Yeah. As well as arms. Yeah. Okay. Great. So you have to fabricate that in hmm. the front as well as in the rear. Okay. Then you can go with the shock towers. Shock the towers. Same, the means the rod which in which suspension is connected. Okay. Okay. So that is the front as well as the rear. Then the most important is the chassis. Okay. So I will explain one one by one how you can fabricate it. So first we'll go with the chassis. Okay. Chassis. 
is the the original material is aluminium okay. it's 6061 so you can change to aluminium 7075 or else with carbon fiber also okay. as you know aluminium 7075 has great strength okay so you first of all you have to select the material okay. once you selected the material then you have to get you have to remove the original chassis from the body okay you have to make design means you have to use the software in mechanical that is katia or proi in which you have to calculate the whole distance and you have to make a complete design of the chassis then we have to go for like, fabrication okay like you were talking about these holes over here yeah yeah okay done so the main thing is that we'll be going through laser cutting or normal mechanical bend we can use anything yeah it's up to you and it it's again depend on the cost also laser cut will not cost so high but the quality what you get in laser cut it's too good means it will be just like the replica of the own because as you have to mount, mount all these uh, suspension and all the set engine in that so it's better you go with laser cut it okay. will give you good accuracy and a good quality chassis okay now talking about this a arms will be bones so what are materials should we use for fabricating this in this you can again use both aluminum carbon fiber as well as nylon but in india uh, nylon is easily available as well as it is cheap price so you can go with that and, and the same you have to okay. again make the design and have to fabricate okay and i can see that uh, this a arms yeah are being yeah this fabricated. this is fabricated one Okay. This is the original one. Okay. So and in this part, we have fabricated for the race itself, for okay. the race itself in, in different colleges. Okay. See, this is fabricated. So these are nylon arms. Yeah. Okay. Now, talking about this chassis, nylon arms, and what all materials should we use for these shock bars that you have said? Ah, in shock towers, there are two availability. That is aluminium of six zero six one seven zero seven five, or else the carbon fiber. It depends upon the material availability and okay. the cost. Again, what you select. Okay, again, same way we'll be doing. Ah, in there you have to go with the hole to hole distance okay. because there is adjustment of the suspension setup. So okay. you have to do it very minutely. Minutely, exactly. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Prasad. Now, can you explain regarding the electronics of this car? I can see many wires coming out over here, so I'm totally interested to know about the electronics. Yeah, electronics will be going with three main components. Okay. The servos. Okay. The receiver transmitter over and here? the batteries. Yeah, okay. this is the receiver. Okay. And this is the transmitter. Okay. And the, the batteries. batteries over here. The four double size batteries. Four double size batteries. So what all batteries we can use? Along with this. Uh, we can use four alkaline batteries. Okay. Or we can go with NiMH batteries. That okay. is nickel metal hydride, six volt. Okay. Five five cells are attached, and mm -hmm. you can get a six volt battery. This is definitely useful for servos to get more powerful. So what do you suggest for the beginners? Uh, you can go with four alkaline cell batteries that is easily available in the market. Okay. Now talking about this. Transmitter and receiver. So, how, what is the gigahertz and all? It's two point four gigahertz. Two point four gigahertz. Yeah. Okay. This is the steering servo. Okay. And the next one is the throttle servo. So, the steering servo. Okay. It moves to the left, right, as okay. per it is a pistol grip transmitter. Okay. So it helps to turn you around. And okay. this is the used for trigger is used for the throttle purpose. That is, when you trigger, you get a full throttle, and you brake okay. when you move in the upward direction. Okay, so with this, hopefully we have completed all the aspects of an RC yeah. nitro car. Friends, we have tried to make this video as informative as possible. It might happen that we have missed some of the concepts, and if you have any doubt, kindly comment in the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. And for more information about nitro RC car, visit our website. That is android.com.